Hiya, today I'm going to show you how to install the OpenVO network as a smart contract on Ethereum. Now this is a decentralized and self-tallying election. And what I mean by that is that these protocols have three different properties. The first is that it's dispute free. So given the full execution transcript of this protocol, anybody can verify that the protocol was run correctly. Second, it provides maximum voter privacy. So the voters privacy can only be breached by a full collusion of all other voters. And third is self-tallying. So nobody is responsible for computing the tally. Instead, anyone, including any observer, can simply add the encrypted votes together and this will reveal the tally of the election. To begin, we have the Ethereum wallet and we connect it to a private test network. What we'll do is, is that we'll copy and paste the code for the anonymous voting into this uh, wallet and we'll deploy the contract on our private network. But what we also need to do is we need to fill two parameters. The first is that we need an Ethereum account to represent a charity. So if a voter registers for the election and doesn't cast their vote, they lose their deposit and we send it off the charity. The second parameter is called the gap. And the idea is that the, self, or the smart contract can self-enforce the minimum time for each round. So, for example, registration should remain open for two hours and there should be three hours for the voting phase. And that is what the gap represents. Now what we do is, is that we deploy the contract and this requires, in my example, 4.7 million gas. And next, we now need to deploy what we call the local crypto library. And this library has all the cryptography to verify the zero-knowledge proofs. So again, we copy and paste that code and then we create the contract and we send that off to the network. And in this example, it requires 4.3 million gas to create our contract. We send the transaction off and of course now the contract's there. So next what we need to do is we have three web pages, one for the voter, one for the admin, and one that is a live feed that allows observers to watch the election in progress. We need to update each HTML file they include the contract address for the anonymous voting contract and for the local crypto contract. So as you can see here, I'm simply updating the values using copy and paste. Now what we do is we open up the admin page and three voter pages. So the election administrator is responsible for creating the election and authenticating the voters. And of course the voting page is for voters to log in and cast their vote. So here we, the election administrator logs in. He'll update the list of eligible voters. Now I have this pre-defined in the website. They make my job a little bit easier while I was testing. But I mean, you have the Ethereum accounts, you hit update eligibility list. This creates a transaction, broadcasts it to the network, and now these voters are eligible to vote. Now, we update a list of uh, deadlines to ensure the election runs in a timely manner. For our example, we separate each deadline by one minute, but in real life, that would be hours or days. Finally, the election administrator sets the question. He specifies what deposit the voter must leave in the contract, so this is one either, and whether the additional commitment round should be enabled or disabled. It is worth mentioning that for our example, we have enabled the commitment round, and I'll explain how that works very shortly. Next, our three voters will log in and register for the election. What they do is, is that they upload a file called voting codes, and this can be computed using the Java program that I have made available in the GitHub. These voting codes are simply random numbers that are used as part of the zero-knowledge proof. And we decided to do it this way because if the browser crashes, then those numbers will exist. I mean, they could just reopen the browser, log in, and then 
they do not have to worry about recomputing random numbers. And what happens here is that when you register for the election, the website will create an Ethereum trial. Oh, it'll notify GIF to create a transaction and send that to the contract. So it'll register a uh, unique voting key for the voter and it will prove in zero knowledge that we know the secret key to that voting key. Once the smart contract verifies that that zero knowledge proof is correct, it will then accept the one either deposit from the voter. Now at this stage, all three voters have now registered for the election. So the election administrator, he can finish the registration phase and allow each voter to move on to the commitment phase. What happens here is that each voter can now decide to vote yes or no for the question. And what this will do is, is that it will create an encrypted vote, it will hash the vote, and then the hash is stored in the smart contract. So we're using a commit and reveal paradigm. So all voters commit to the vote, and then once everybody's committed to their vote, they then reveal the encrypted vote to the network. So the encrypted vote sent to the smart contract alongside a one out of two zero knowledge proof. And then once the smart contract verifies the zero knowledge proof, this guarantees that the vote is either zero or one, which represents yes or no. Now the commitment round is not necessary. I've only enabled it for this example to explain how it works. Ideally, you should just do register and vote because then there's only two rounds of interaction. And then of course, finally, once all the votes have been cast, Anybody can compute the tally at this stage. Now, I request the election administrator to hit the tally button. Just the inf well, for one, he'll pay the transaction fee for that. And two, now the smart contract has computed the tally. And now if anyone goes on the live feed page, the, this website will look up the current state of the voting contract. And then the tally is recorded in the contract. So it's fairly straightforward to display it on the website. And as we can see here is that voters have committed to their vote, they've registered for the election, and they've cast their vote, and now we know the final tally.